emergency. He has got a thought for his smart car. North Yorkshire's traffic cops. Crash, 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 crash. 140 mile an hour. How stupid are you? Driving down crime in England's largest county. Not lie to me. Stone, stone, stone. Across 3,000 square miles. Your vehicle's been stolen by an ambulance heading towards. Dealing with danger on the roads. What the hell are you doing? The trapped in the vehicle upside down. Under pressure. Go over there and I will speak to you. Come on, mate, talk to us. Out! You're under arrest. I don't want to move. And at risk. Tell me what I can't for see. Right, you're under arrest. What's up? Right, you've had enough. That's serious organised crime level. Any more strikes, mate, you're going to go to prison. Around every corner. He's going to kill somebody. Why haven't you stopped? There's a new challenge. For the traffic cops. Show me your hands! Uh, Show me your hands! Coming up. Yeah, it's going wrong. He's out. The young, drunk, and drugged. Get your cell phone now! Step out! Step out, kid! He's leaving both sides of the carriageway. On the run. What are you doing? Listen to under the limit. Unwilling to change. It makes me angry that he's done it twice in a week. Please, please. She said he's taking coke. He's not reacting. Wake up! And fighting for their lives. We want to make sure that people don't die on our roads. It's God's country, isn't it? Let's be fair. Working in a rural force compared to working in a, a metropolitan force, your roads are much quicker in a rural force, are they? Because there's yeah. a lot more national. More bigger accidents because you've yeah. got 60 instead of crawling bumps, haven't you? Yeah. On the western borders of North Yorkshire, traffic cops Sergeant Paul Crabtree and Ben Prosser wait are three hours into a day shift. It's not a national park for no reason, is it? It's a bit of a privilege, really. But as well, there's some responsibility with that. Can't just have anybody coming through and no, that's using it. the roads like the, the racetracks. Go ahead. News comes in that a young driver is suspected of taking his dad's car without consent. It's on the hot list as well, if we get any sightings. He's failed to stop for police and is wanted. You just have a look at the suspect. Yeah, stand by him. His previous from the member. Reported to be under the influence of cannabis, the young man has been taken into police custody before. Allegedly, he failed to stop for the police another time and is suspected of running away from a vehicle after it was set on fire, though he was not charged or convicted. That's lovely. You got myself and 12.14 in Oscar Romeo 56. Police cameras pinpoint the car being driven through the Dales. Towards Richmond. We'll start making his way up that way. Hey, thank you. There's certain triggers as a traffic cop that you listen to and you think, oh, no, that heightens the risk. And we know this person may well be intoxicated under the influence of drugs. It heightens the risk to the public and it heightens the risk to himself. Can you confirm for me, ASAP, has Dad had any contact with son? Negative, no contact with son. The search continues, and there are now three police units hunting for it. Given these previous and the size of the car, I'd suggest that we go for a box with a stinger. With that, we've got the added, added elements of the potential truck driving. We're going up the back route, the Dales, which is, I think, the way he's taken, and there are the Zulu Papa units going up, so I think they'll be sufficient for it. Yeah, it was so We've got firearms units looking for the vehicle. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, sighting. Bye-bye. We still got anybody coming in from the other end. You've got 12 stops. What feature monitor? I'm going to give him some room, mate. Yeah. We're just maintaining a bit of a gap. Um, it's possible that he's not realised that he's wearing another marked car. That's received. The speed's currently 80 miles an hour. 
with how he's driving and the state that he's in. He's a danger. He's a danger to himself. He's a danger to other road users. Oh, he's almost just gone head on into an oncoming vehicle on a blind brow. Other cars doing 60 mile an hour and he's doing 70, 80. That's a combined crash head on at 130 mile an hour. That's going to end someone's life. Well, when you can try and pop some uh, spear sight. Yeah, we're going to need one ahead of us uh, heading towards. Um... Right, come on, stinging spot on here. As Ben and Paul prepare to puncture the suspect's tyres. Romeo 56, just grid us, we've got a stinger, stinger pop. More backup is nearby. Do you want to go spot? Yeah. What you want to do is ambush the vehicle. You don't want that vehicle to know that you're going to throw a stinger out in front of it. You want the person to drive over it. Yeah. Quite a strong smell of cannabis coming from the vehicle. Almost lost it on the bends. Uh... Is there any vehicles in front of the subject vehicle? Yeah, XC90 Black. I am anticipating he's probably going to go for an overtake on that one, though. The third police car is racing to help bring the vehicle to a stop. Just tell Foxy when he comes up behind us to chill out with his lights, man, for us. He's slowed right down now. He's obviously not aware of our presence. So, which confirm on course for the Stinger side then? Yeah. It's an intense feeling because you're waiting for the inevitable. It's coming round that corner. I'm as a spotter thinking, please don't lose control and don't come through this wall that I'm hiding behind. But Paul's vulnerable. He's in the middle of a road with a stinger and a car coming towards him that, that doesn't want to stop. And he's gone for the overtake. The stinger sight into the 30s now, did he monitor it? Right, it's confirmed. we're just outside. Through a red light on the traffic lights. Stinger deployed, yeah. It's gone over the stinger, stand by. When you hear that, it's a relief. So now that vehicle's been stung, what we want to do is completely surround that vehicle and bring it to a stop. Yeah, I've got a front near side deflation, uh, slowing down 30 mile an hour. Right, the bright blue jacket on. Bright blue. Bright blue. Front's going to go on a minute, mate. Yeah, I can see both front tyres deflated. Uh, it's going to be before he loses his tyres, I think. It's not bad. Yeah, it's on his rooms. 1 8 from 1 0. I'm thinking about getting past him. What do you think? Yeah, just, uh, I'm thinking the same. Let's just get this wagon past us on the on side and then we'll get past him. Yeah. Yeah, you go front, I'll go rear. Yeah, he's lost both front tyres now, so... With Ben and Paul playing catch-up. Sure, I'm happy for the box. Yeah, that's received. Go on, yeah, we have to go for it, mate. The lead car moves ahead of the suspect. While colleagues close in from behind. Yeah, out. Coming up. Please return that! It's lost, lost from my view, lost, lost. The chase turns into a manhunt. Dog units here. He's either ran up this hill or he's gone through the field. Please, please. And lives put at risk when a 19 year old driver crashes head on into a 40 ton truck. There's a very strong smell of cannabis coming from it. It's just uh, a scene of utter carnage. Ooh. In North Yorkshire. Yeah, we're going to have to go for it, mate. After an hour long search for a suspected stolen car. He's out. Please return that! A young man is on the run in the Yorkshire Dales. Uh, it's lost, lost from my view, lost, lost. I think if we I just... Mean, just... Dog units here. Hold of the river, I think that's our best options. Traffic cops Ben Prosser Waite and Sergeant Paul Crabtree are among the officers hunting him down. 
There's the road with the van on it, there's the river there which we've got covered in between and it appears to be somewhere in this, this straight of land here towards that plantation. So it's a case of waiting now. Along with the dog unit, five firearms officers are searching. He was wearing a boat, however, he seems to have uh, discarded of his clothing. Oh no! Step out! Step out, Taser! Step out of the bin! I think they found him. I think we found him. How's it behind your back? I'll get the close one. Thank you. All right, fella, listen to me. You're currently going to be under arrest and suspicion of stealing a motor vehicle, dangerous driving, and failed to stop the police, okay? Listen, I think you've got the wrong guys. There's four lads running through here. One guy in a big blue jacket. All right. That wasn't you, was it? No. All right. And now you grab me. Wait, oh, I was in there meditating. Hey, can you please take my bag? I haven't got nothing on me, man. I've already told you everything I got. There's weed in the bag. That's it. I smoke weed. That's everything. that's all you got. Yeah, good job, mate. Right, keep walking, buddy. Is that the car? Woo! Can I have some water? Get off me, mate. Get off me. Get off me, come on. Let me just get in myself. Let me 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 get in myself. Listen to me. 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 Listen Who's in charge of this? Who's in charge? Who's the leader? Don't Who's in charge? Live and direct. I said, Who's in charge? Yo. Who's in charge? I am then. Just Thank you. To me. All right. That's okay. all it's all. How are you? That's all it's all. Uh, uh, I think. Yo. In his bag where he was hiding, there was um, several of these packets here. Uh, and inside was a quantity of green herbal matter that we believe to be cannabis. There's several of them. Two there that are. Uh, still sealed, it's a similar feeling inside them as well. As well as drugs offences, the young suspect could be facing other charges and time in prison. Just grab the back and just talk to him a second while I do this. Just talk to him, I don't know. You're not passing out. He's going to go down to Harrogate Custody. Initially on aggravated taking of the vehicle, the dangerous driving elements of it. It's fit to interview, we'll get that done. One. Front two. It's only done fronts. Even stood here now, there's just the waft of cannabis coming out of it. And then if we find anything else in the car, we'll put everything to him and see what he's got to say, really. It's pleasant, this, isn't it? It you is know, pleasant. Like recovering a stolen vehicle in the Dales. Go ahead. Uh, regarding the Volvo, we're going to go to the recovery yard and search it. The road's challenging enough as it is. For an advanced driver, you've got roads that narrow, you've got junctions coming out, you've got tractors going up and down the country roads. It only takes one corner to get it wrong, and you're putting yourself at danger or the other person at danger. With more than one and a half thousand 17 to 25 year olds killed or seriously injured each year, young motorists are some of the most at risk especially when drink and drugs are involved. Bring 999. Yes. Uh, please, please. Hi, it's just a report accident on the Ring Road. It's mid-morning on the York Ring Road. He's not gone out. A 19-year-old in a Corsa has just smashed head-on into a 40-ton lorry. On our TV, Shipton Road area, York bypass between HGD and two cars. I think one person is trapped in one of the cars and the road is blocked. I'm just at Bramham, I can go if you want me to. Nearby, traffic cop Chris Storey is one of the first to respond. So it's been made aware currently uh, occupants trapped in one of the vehicles, so um, we'll just head towards and... Um, and see what the situation is in relation to injuries. I always fear the worst whenever there's somebody involved in a high-speed collision. 
we're always going to treat it that somebody potentially is going to die. Oscar Romeo 1 3, have we established the level of injury yet? We just clicked at the end then, but I got pain in his face. Yes, yes, he comes breathing, speaking to us at the moment. There's officers with him at the minute, so Pardon. we'll obviously explore that when we get there. He is uh, trapped, he's crushed. He has got a passenger, he's completely uninjured. Ah, that's monitored. Chris, just keep us updated. I'll start making my way down from Leeming. Also making his way to the scene is traffic cop Sergeant Pete Stringer. If we work on the worst case scenario and then stamp people down. He'll be investigating the cause of the crash with Chris. And have we got the markers and his recent arrest just in case there's anything further in the car? There's a suggestion just come over the radio about one of the drivers um, possibly linked to drugs and that there might be some drugs in his car. I'm just on 59 now, so uh, is it actually 19 towards the ambulance headquarters? I've got one opportunity only to gather that evidence that will hopefully lead to either a successful prosecution or, if there has been a fatality, to answering questions of grieving families. I understand that one of the drivers or one of the witnesses has a dash cam in his car as well, which we'll obviously be keen to look at. This young lad's obviously taken a massive risk. If he is driving after consuming alcohol and drugs and in the manner in which he's allegedly driving... In these circumstances, they'll look at cutting him out. I don't think we've decided where he's going yet, though, have we? Whether he's no, going by no, ambulance so or what, air ambulance. What they'll do is they'll get him out, they'll assess him. Obviously, we do have a concern um, in relation to him being under the influence well, of alcohol I, or drugs. I, I, could, I could stink cannabis like no yeah, business. Yeah, so, so we will want a cop with him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We'll, let, we'll let you know. The driver, of the course, has been seen to by the fire and ambulance service. Hopefully, we'll get him out soon. Fire are cutting the roof off the vehicle to be able to get him out nice and safely. Yeah, he's deteriorating. He's deteriorating. Yeah. Okay, and we can plan once we get him out. With his condition getting worse, time is critical. <sighs> Pete arrives and turns his attention to the HGV. Morning. Anything you need from me or? I'll come and find you, sir. <laughs> okay. With any collision where an HGV is involved, the final outcome isn't good. The two coming head on together, one being a small hatchback car, one of them being a 44 tonne goods vehicle, it makes it a potentially 100 mile an hour plus collision. It's just a, a scene of utter carnage that's going to take quite a while to clear up. The truck driver has been seen by medics and left the crash site. The keys are out of it. Yeah, I'm great, so. The driver did sustain a fractured thumb, probably from holding onto the steering wheel, trying to regain control of his vehicle. He must have been going through absolute hell. While the lorry's size protected its driver from serious harm, the Corsa driver's injuries are still being checked. That's it, squeeze them really tight. Got to think first and foremost about um, the driver's welfare. Have we asked for a drug wipe, Chris? Um, no, we've not got that far. If, if yeah. we, yeah, I was just going to let him get assessed, but yeah. if we, if we can, we'll get, we'll do a saliva and breath test here. Just going into the ambulance. Um, right. You can see the alcohol container in there, but I was looking for drugs. Obviously, there's a. What could be mistaken for a dealer bag on the driver's seat and obviously down in there, I mean, they do look to be empty in fairness. Although there's a very strong smell of cannabis coming from it. With signs of possible alcohol and drug use, Pete speaks to the passenger. Hiya. Oh, yeah. Just been told that you were a passenger in the vehicle. Been checked over by paramedics? Yep. Feeling all right, apart yeah. from shaking up? Yes. Is it your partner, your boyfriend that's driving? Yeah, well, you... Uh, no. No, family friend or...? No, just a friend. Just a friend. OK, and where have you been this morning? Uh, my friend's house. 
Oh, is it? This is like pulling teeth, is this? This is like having a conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. with my teenager. Yeah, coming back from and do you know what happened at all? Did you see it, hear it? Yeah. What happened? He just crashed into the lorry. He just crashed into the lorry. Well. Any reason why he crashed into the lorry? I don't know. Distracted by anything? No. Doing anything you shouldn't have been doing? That you're aware of? No. Okay. As the young driver is treated, Pete receives an update. She said he's taking coke. Because yeah. he keeps having episodes of not breathing, which is, I think, um, okay. because of like, drugs. Yeah, yeah. Is he conscious? Can you open your eyes for me? Can you hear me? He's not reacting. Grab the oxygen. Wake up! They're going to take him by an ambulance to Leeds. Um, have you done the procedure before? In the hospital, we have. With an officer on his way to hospital to arrange a blood test, Chris explores how the driver lost control. We need to establish why is the car so on the wrong side of the road. There could be a number of reasons. Has he gone for an overtake? Has he had a medical episode at the wheel? There's drugs paraphernalia found in the car and the vodka bottle. There could be a number of factors as to why he's there. So I'm having a quick look at the point of impact. We've got markings here, which are kind of straying in this direction, and then a long, what appears to be a tyre mark here. As you can see, it's, there is quite a significant um, indentation into the road there, so that the actual point of impact, so we can see that he was obviously on the wrong side of the road. He's obviously just made a bad decision, and that's probably coupled with whatever is in his system, which is yet to be determined. We can look at getting the road back open. You know, it's going to be putting people out of the way, so we'll look at getting it open as soon as we can. The most recent update from the hospital is that the driver's um, in and out of sleep, apparently, which um, could be to do with a number of things, obviously medical or whether it, He's under the influence of some drugs still, and which just kind of shows, obviously, that he shouldn't have been driving in the first place, but we strongly suspect. Fortunately, we've got some dash cam footage, we've got a number of witnesses that have seen his manner of driving and things like that, so it really helps us to support our investigation. Coming up... <laughs> more young drivers putting lives at risk. If you take a chance like that, you're going to kill somebody. And police cameras. That's it. Contact, contact. Lead the traffic cops to a repeat offender. Don't drive twice in the same day. Positive again. Oscar Sierra 15, just confirm you've got ambulance on route. Across the country, drunk and drugged under 25s are a growing problem. A member of the public has come across a vehicle on its side in the hedge. Driver seems intoxicated. And it's at night that the traffic cops catch many of these young drivers behind the wheel. Are you buying? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're buying. It's your, your super All super right, super yeah. Super <laughs> We get lots of reports from members of the public. We do face an issue with drink and drug drivers who are younger. 19th of the 10th, 22. They think, oh, it's just, it's just a drive home, it's just a drive around the corner. How come you parked there today? If you take a chance like that, you are going to get caught or you're going to kill somebody. There's a massive owl then. Massive owl on the side of the road, took off. It does be looking over at fields. It is nice when you're driving around and you say stuff like that. Yeah. PC Mike Rowan is starting a night shift with colleague Carl Barnes. In the control room, an urgent call comes in. A vehicle's driving up down very fast around the road. The hood up looking. Just on route. Medwell Public has phoned in to say that uh, there's a car currently outside the house, which is driving up and down the road uh, like a maniac. 
We haven't got any vehicle details at the moment, apart from it being a silver Ford Fiesta. There's always a bit of an excitement uh, whenever a job like that's gone off. It's what we joined the job to do, catch people like that. So uh, we don't know whether it's stolen, we don't know if it's a drink driver. Uh, so we're not too far away, so uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll find them. Also racing to where the car was last seen, a Sergeant Julian Pearson and PC Matt Harvey. Yeah, I just want some contact for information here. Go on. Up ahead, Julian's caught up with the suspect vehicle. Vehicles all over the road. Let's have some of the units, please. Presence from the vehicles have been failing to stop. Let's have some of the units, please. Matt's not far behind. Romeo Till Park, I get to Selby Park with the stinger. Thank you. The third unit is also speeding its way towards the suspect car. It is all over the road. You might expect somebody in that state just be walking out your local pub at three o'clock on a Friday night, uh, not in a car driving through Hamilton Village. It is leaving both sides of the carriageway. We have to get this vehicle stopped right now because if it continues, it's going to crash. It should hopefully work out because there's two traffic units, like myself included, on route from this side of the village, and uh, there's another unit heading in from the opposite side. It's committed, committed back towards Monkfryston. I'll go out with a finger flash. Yeah, that's received. And we've just hit the curb. As Julian continues the pursuit, Mike and Matt prepare their stingers. A63 just outside of Monkfryston. Yes, mate, this is us. Despite a successful sting, Julian still needs backup. Yes, yes, we are on route to you. Pulling over to the near side, just pulling the box in the face. Good, Kate. Yeah, there you go, much time. How old are you, mate? Uh, uh, have you had a drink? Oh, I, can, I can smell drink on you. No, right, because of your, listen to I'm me. Under the limit. Because of the manner of your driving and because yeah. I can smell alcohol in your breath, I'm going to require yeah. you to provide me, provide me with a specimen of breath. All right. One continuous breath until they tell you to stop. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. He immediately struck me as being drunk. You could smell it. There's such a strong smell of alcohol in the air, which is all the more concerning, considering he was behind the wheel of a car. So you failed the roadside breath test. So you've blown 77 at the roadside, the legal limit is 35. So at this point you are uh, arrested yeah, for driving a motor vehicle while well, uh, over the prescribed limit. Yeah. Mate, keep your hands where I can see them. Yeah. The keys are on the dashboard there. So, yeah, I'll, so, yeah, so I'll take care of them in a second. Right, what are you hands, doing? Keep your hands on there. You can't, have, well, you can't, you can't smoke either, mate. I've got an update for you. The suspect does have previous. He was arrested for drug driving two days ago. Have I? Right, mate. You can know uh, Pop you in the back of here, yeah. you're going to get taken to York. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When you hear news that he's done it twice in a week, it makes me angry because this isn't just one offence. This isn't just a thing, oh, I, I just, I've had a bit to drink and I'm, I'm just going to go out for a drive. He's had, had a tough day or something like that. He's done it twice in a week. This is becoming a habit which needs to be stopped. How many times have I got? Let's have a look. I think two, Both three. this side. Three. Three. Three out of four. Yeah. <laughs> Just going through there, mate. All the way. In custody, Matt Harvey and traffic cop Pete Allison prepare the driver for further tests. 
Right, this way, my friend. Have, you, have yourself a seat there. Sweet, too. So... Sit, sit yourself down. I warn you that failure to provide either of these specimens will render you liable to prosecution. Do you agree to provide two specimens of breath for analysis? Liable to prosecution of what? If, if, you, don't, if you don't provide a specimen of breath, you're liable to prosecution for fail to provide. Right, so when you're ready, I'll hold that tube. Yeah. yeah. So remember, one big lung of, fill your lungs full of air, and then one continuous breath until I tell you to stop. Keep going, keep going. That's it, mate, fantastic, stop there. Right, if I can just show you these then. So it's taken two breath tests from you. Um, the first one is 75, and the second one is 73, so that confirms you are over the limit. Having blown twice the legal limit, the man faces his second charge of the week. Go on, in you, in you go, man. So the plan from here is get your head down if you wish. You're going to be with us for the night and in the morning, yeah? By the time that alcohol needs to leave your system, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's probably going to be the morning. Take care. How are you doing? You all right? In the police waiting area. Um, I'm just... See if I can get access to this room and then we'll go through there and have a chat with you. The 19-year-old driver involved in the serious crash with the HGV is waiting to have a voluntary interview. To prepare, Chris Story reviews witness dashcam footage. Dashcam footage is obviously just absolute gold as for us. It's, it's brilliant, it's what we want to see. So the footage shows the heavy goods vehicle driving on the right side of the road, not doing anything wrong, driving along at quite a steady speed. And then all of a sudden you see the collision with the car, so as it kind of spins out down the road in the goods vehicle, it kind of takes a sudden turn to the near side, travels into the field. So it shows us that the, the heavy goods vehicles on the right side of the road is not doing anything wrong. The car is on the wrong side of the road. So we just want to basically see what his account's going to be. That's it, go over seat that side for me. Perfect. Do you want to tell me what happened? And why is that that you can't remember? Oh, right, okay. The suspect denies taking any drugs or consuming any alcohol prior to the collision. He's not really giving an account other than saying that um, he can't remember it, really. Just completely blanking the idea of him knowing anything about the collision happened, uh, why he was on that side of the roads. While Chris waits for the results of the blood tests, the young man is free to get back on the road. I would like to think that within the space of two weeks, being arrested and also being involved in a serious road traffic collision would be more than enough to give anybody the absolute wake-up call. This is time for serious change, isn't it? He's certainly young enough to make changes now, so I hope that going forward he does. Coming up. A, uh, a driver with from Another young driver. We've got somebody that's been told not to get back into his vehicle and has just completely ignored that information. Faces a second arrest in the space of a few hours. Gonna probably fail this, you know that, don't you? I really hope not. It's pub closing time. Sergeant Rich Harrison and traffic cop Mark Davey are on the lookout for young, drunk or drugged drivers. Keep accelerating to the red light, mate. It's a good idea. Oh, light's red. The new generation see it socially acceptable to drug drive. They don't think that there's anything wrong with having a couple of joints and getting in the car. Drug driving is as dangerous as drink driving. Still in York? Yes, yes. There's a, uh, a truck driver with lots of failure in Scarborough, been released from custody, is now travelling back to West Yorkshire. Go ahead. Silver 5 Series. Yeah, 10-4. He's apparently uninsured as well. Yeah, received. Rich, we're just ahead here, Craig and I. Do you want to plot up somewhere? Yes, yes, we'll show you up when we're ready to chill. 10-4. 
Nearby, traffic cop Mark Patterson is providing backup. We've not got somebody that's trying to just drug drive under the radar. We've got somebody that's been told not to get back into his vehicle and has just completely ignored that information. That's it. That's it. I think vehicles pass the opposite direction. Yeah, yeah, contact, contact with subject vehicle. Committed, committed, westbound. Unable to tell how many occupants are inside the vehicle. Uh, speed six zero. The second police car is now right behind Rich and Mark. Near side indication, stand by. Jump out, step over here for us. You know what's coming in. Yeah, I do, I do. Lovely. So stand up here then to sort out the flow of traffic. I'm just going to reverse the car back. Just walk down towards this car. So go on, talk me through what's happened tonight then. So basically, me and girlfriend come out for a drive. Um, I had a smoke at about 7 o'clock after work. Tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so what um, we talked, 7 o'clock we're talking 8 hours ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I drove here. Like I say, got pretty much to scarp right round about on the front. Uh, one of your colleagues got behind me, followed me all the way along. I pulled up, obviously we're going to roll the fag, go for a little walk with girlfriend. Um, obviously, the vast of anything in the car, I admit to having a grinder. Uh, I searched the car, obviously they put a car to that with no insurance, which I legitimately shocked them out. So, you've not been paying your insurance for three months? Yeah, pr yeah pretty much. Right, so, yeah. do you be so I believe Probably you believe you're not insured yeah, yeah. then? Oh no, that, that's pending, yeah, but I've insured the car now for cover just to get it home. Right. Because I, I found out that I'm not insured when I've got there. So it is covered now. I've got the email to get me home. We'll deal with that after. I, I, I suspect you're still kind of missing. Yeah. Was it one of these that you did before or was it a big machine? No, no, it was a machine at station. Right. The same on your right cheek. I've got a jacket on back to your car. There's a chance you can grab it. Uh, just the, the blue one, mate. So when you were released from custody tonight, yeah, yeah. what was your advice? Uh, basically, advice recommended not to drive. The chap behind the counter who booked me in, he, he said I'm still able to drive, but obviously... Say again, you're still what? Still able to drive. So you've been, so you've been told tonight, when you've left custody, that you're still OK to drive? Yeah, but they recommended not to, purely because obviously the cannabis. You're going to probably fail this, you know that, don't I you? I really hope not. Um, so, I mean, the information that we've got is that you've been, you, you said that someone was coming to collect you. No one was going to try and arrange someone to come collect us. What I'm trying to say is, two sides to every story, yeah. I'm assuming the police officers at Scarborough believe that you've got someone to come and collect you. Well, no, they let us walk out of the hotel. Um, yeah, they the would have let you walk out because... We told them we're going to go to a hotel. So you haven't? No, no, no. Right, so they think you've gone to a hotel, do they? Yes. Right, now we're getting somewhere, I think. Because yeah, that, no, no, that won't be honest, mate. I've got well, it weren't quite there a minute ago. A minute ago, you got told to go get in your car and drive home. Having driven 90 miles to Scarborough uninsured, it's suspected the driver was trying to get home before his two hour insurance runs out. Well, as we suspected, you're positive again. Oh, are you kidding? Okay. Really? I'll yeah. be honest, I've got it. Like, so, as a result of that, no one's arrest, especially with the driving. That's what's going to happen is we're going to go to York custody this time. Right, cause obviously, all I'm thinking about now, that car's obviously going to be not insured in a couple of hours, isn't it? It's going to be left on the road. But you're not having the keys this time. No, no, no. We're having the keys. That's fine, that's fine. You're a risk. You'll Thank be staying you. in as long as we can keep you in. Once again, the young man will undergo a further drug test at the station. Don't drink drive twice in the same day. No, I thought That'll after be... a few hours, mate, I'll be honest, I thought... Yeah, but they've advised you. They'll have, they'll have said to you when you leave, they'll have said... No. Don't, Don't get back in your car. What have you done? All right, right, no okay. no right. Unbelievable, isn't it? And he probably thought that he could chance his arm. You know, he probably thought, oh, you know, no one will notice, but we have noticed. The lads that smoke it day in, day out, when you speak to them, you know, they've got mental health problems or depression and then they use cannabis to cope with them issues. But it's probably the cannabis use that's contributed towards the mental health and it's just a vicious cycle you know and, and throwing getting into your car in the mix it's it's just a recipe for disaster
feet once a time. Show me the bottoms of your feet. Thank you, good one. Thank you. The young man could be facing a minimum one-year driving ban, an unlimited fine and up to six months in prison. While he's checked in for a second blood test in a matter of hours, Mark and Rich are taking care of his girlfriend. She needs to get back to Huddersfield. So I just asked if she could just sit in the car until he eventually comes out in a few hours. Well, no, because he'll just drive the car again. Well, this is it. So, so how long are they going to keep him in for? Eight, it should be eight hours, shouldn't it? But even then, you know, they're going to probably tell him not to drive, aren't they? Because of mm. what's just happened. I'll tell her then she needs to go and sit in the front counter. Right. Right, cool. Both some people don't learn. So it's, well, it baffles me, absolutely baffles me. Silly man. Almost 20% of road deaths involve drivers with traces of drugs in their system and is the leading cause of deaths amongst the under 30s. He's prepared to drive 90 miles whilst intoxicated through drugs, whilst uninsured. Not only does it put him and his girlfriend at risk, but it puts everybody else at risk. There's no excuse for that. These drug drivers on the road do change lives. To them, they just see it as harmless, but we see what impact it does have, and we see that it's not harmless. The consumption of drinking drugs, it's certainly more prevalent with the younger driver. It's just absolutely not worth the risk. If you're gonna drink, if you're gonna do drugs, do not get behind the wheel of a car. It is as simple as that, because it is the quickest way to get in some serious trouble. In this episode... Quite a strong smell of cannabis coming from the vehicle. No further action was taken against the young man in relation to aggravated vehicle taking. Fella, get your cell phone now! Step out! Step out, Taser! But he has been charged with no insurance, dangerous driving, fail to stop, possession of Class B drugs and driving otherwise than in accordance with a licence. Let me just get in myself, let me get in myself. He's due to appear at Crown Court. After further inquiries, no action was taken against the young man in relation to his previous arrest for dangerous driving, criminal damage and arson. The young driver who crashed head-on into a 40-ton truck was found to be six times over the drug driving limit. At court, he received a one-year driving ban and fined £153. She said he's taken cook. An investigation into his previous arrest for drug offences is still ongoing. Lots of carnage. The HGV driver did not sustain any life-changing injuries and has fully recovered and is back to work. Take quite a while to clear up. Vehicles all over the road. After testing twice the legal limit for alcohol, the driver pursued by Julian Pearson was banned from the roads for 20 months. Get the keys. Yeah, there you go, boys. Now, nah, boys, the way. Blood tests also confirmed he had been drug driving two nights earlier. He received a further 32 months disqualification and fines totalling £240. And that's it. That's it. The young man who failed a roadside drug test twice in the space of a few hours was handed a 12 month driving ban. Um, I had a smoke at about 7 o'clock after work. No action was taken against him for uninsured driving. Don't drive twice in the same day. As he was able to produce an accepted certificate of insurance. Unbelievable, isn't it? Traffic cops are back new next Monday at 8. Starting with a St Bernard staging a sit-in whenever it's time for walkies. Graham's back on a mission to help dogs behaving very badly new tomorrow at 8. 
Coming up, after reports of a burglary in progress, can Gloucestershire's finest catch the culprits red-handed? Police Night Shift 999 is new next.